Applications of Ion Exchange Chromatography Ion Exchange Chromatography is a powerful but somewhat cumbersome technique and it is used in a large number of separations. Some of its applications are as follows. First, removal of interfering radicals. Phosphate ion interferes in the estimation of calcium or barium ions by oxalate method. Removal of phosphate ion is achieved by passing a solution of calcium or barium ions through a sulfonic acid cation exchanger. The calcium or barium ions held by the resin will be removed by using suitable eluent and can be estimated. Second is softening of hot water. Calcium and magnesium and other divalent ions are removed by passing hard water through cation exchangers charged with sodium ions. Calcium and magnesium ions are retained in the column whereas sodium ions pass into the solution. Desalting of water. The process by which salts are removed from water is called desalting. The ion exchange method of desalting consists in passing water through hydrogen or hydroxyl form of ion exchange filters. Carbon dioxide is removed by degasification either by bubbling air through the water or by spraying water in towers. The hydrogen cation charge is regenerated with a 1 to 1.5 percent solution of sulfuric acid or a 3 to 7 percent solution of hydrogen chloride. The anion exchange filters are regenerated by 4 to 5 percent solution of sodium hydroxide or sodium bicarbonate. This method ensures the purification of water to 10 to 15 milligrams per liter of residual salts. Similarly, ferric ions can be removed from water by the cation exchange method. For example, when water passes through a calcium form of cation exchanger, the following reaction takes place in which the calcium ions combine with sulfate to form calcium sulfate and ferric ions enter the exchanger. The iron content can be decreased by this method up to 0.05 milligrams per liter. Next application is in removing carbonate from a solution of sodium hydroxide. A solution of sodium hydroxide may be made free from carbonate by using ion exchange methods. For this, the solution of sodium hydroxide containing carbonate is allowed to pass through an hydroxyl form of an anion exchange resin. The carbonate gets replaced by hydroxide and the resulting carbonate free sodium hydroxide solution is used as a titrant. Next application is in determination of total cation content of a sample. The total cation content of a sample solution can be determined by passing the sample through a hydrogen cation exchanger. The number of equivalents of hydrogen ion in the effluent, for example, the acid content of the effluent is determined by titration with a strong base. In this manner, the number of equivalents of cations in the sample is established. If the sample solution contains free acid and hydrogen ion is to be distinguished from other cations, an identical aliquot of the sample solution is titrated with the base without passing through the column. The difference between the volume of the base required in this titration and that required for the titration of the effluent corresponds to the equivalence of cations other than hydrogen ions. The method is however not applicable to samples which contain cations that precipitate as hydroxides during the titration. Next application is the preparation of standard solution. A salt of high equivalent weight can be used to standardize a base 
in order to prepare a standard acid solution. A known amount of dry salt is dissolved in water and the resulting solution is completely removed from the column by passing distilled water through the column. The combined effluent can be used directly to standardize the base. Because effluent contains an amount of hydrogen ions that can be calculated from the amount of salt taken. Ion exchange resins can be used in the preparation of solutions in a number of ways. For example, ionic salts can be removed from organic reaction mixtures. This facilitates purification of organic compounds through crystallization. Next application is the determination of concentration of traces of ions. A useful application of ion exchange resin is in determining the concentrations of traces of an ion from a very dilute solution. Cation exchange resins are used to collect traces of metallic elements from larger volumes of natural water. The ions are then liberated from the resin by treatment with acids. Next application is the separation of isotopes. Isotopes of boron, beryllium, calcium, cobalt and uranium are separated on ion exchange columns. Kakina have used electromigration in an ion exchange membrane in order to separate isotopes and cations of different metals. Porous silica microspheres impregnated with 2 ethyl hexyl phosphate has also been used for the separation of calcium isotopes and transuranic elements. Next application is in the study of equilibrium and kinetic studies. The distribution of the components of mixed solvents inside and outside a cation exchange resin, distribution of chelating agents between solution and resin and the distribution of metal ion in solution of weak and strong acids were extensively studied by Poitrinod and his co-workers. According to these authors, the distribution could be used to calculate the ionization constant of, for example, nitric acid in acetic acid solvent. Next uh, application of ion exchange chromatography is in the separation of rare earths. Extensive use of ion exchange methods have been made have used in metallurgy. And the most important use in the, is in the separation of rare earth metals, which are difficult to separate in other ways. Isolation and separation of rare earths by ion exchange process yields pure metals. The adsorption column contains cation exchange resins. During the process, hydrogen ions of these resins are replaced by other cations. The column is packed with suitable resin such as Dovex 50 or Nalcite. The solution containing the mixture of rare earths is first passed through the column filled with the resin. The cation exchange resin replaces all cations present in the solution with hydrogen ions and cation present in the solution take their place. The rare earth cations get adsorbed through the length of the column in the form of the bands. The most strongly adsorbed ions are near the top and the least strongly adsorbed is at the bottom. The heavier cations are adsorbed at the bottom and the lighter cations are adsorbed at the top of the column. An eluting solution containing a strongly adsorbable cation, for example hydrogen ion in SCL, is then passed through the column which gradually displaces other cations. The eluate contains first one and then another of the adsorbed ions in order of increasing strength of adsorption. And this is how the rare earths are separated. Isolation of transuranic elements is another application of ion exchange. The separation of transuranic elements 
is carried out with cation exchange resins such as Dovex 50 using either ammonium citrate or lactate as the element. The columns are operated at 87 degrees centigrade using trichloroethylene to control the temperature. Since the isotopes are obtained in low yield and some of them are even short lived, the ion exchange methods provide selectivity, rapidity, accuracy and precision. Ion exchange chromatography is also used in the separation of zirconium and hafnium. The separation of zirconium and hafnium are ion exchange process in which elution of tetra-positive ions is carried out with HCl solution in a cation exchange resin, Dovex 50, has also been operated successfully. The progressive removal of hafnium from zirconium salts in a natural mixture of the two has been effected successfully using anion exchange resin Emberlite IRA 400. The fluoro complexes of zirconium and hafnium have been eluted with sulfuric acid where hafnium separates out in the first fractions. In this manner, 90% of hafnium-free zirconium is obtained.